Hi, this is Phil Tucker, and my lit RPG novel Death March just dropped a couple of days ago. It's a madcap tale set in a virtual world filled with necromancers, bizarre goblins, ruined castles, and a hero who's desperately trying to avoid being permanently slain by just about everything around him. If you're up for a fast-paced adventure filled with tense battles, high stakes, and a D&D kind of framework, look it up on Amazon today. Thanks. Warning, the following may contain Fomorians. Join fantasy authors Phil Tucker, Tamandra Whitecastle, David Benham, Benedict Patrick, and Josiah Bancroft as they roll dice and take on the bad guys in a game of Dungeons and Dragons. Five authors, five worlds, one adventure. It's time to get crit-faced. Previously on Crit-Faced, the party's first encounter with a vampire has ended in failure. Now that the church has been investigated, Ismark and Irina expect the heroes to help them bury their father, and the heroes must decide on their next move. Well, I think that went very well. <laughs> Lord Talfrin groans and covers his face. Did we just release a vampire into the wild? Well, was, I think it was sort of a dress rehearsal. You know, if you think of it that way, just sort of a, a first brush with this sort of encounter. We did not do that poorly. I think that I did very well. I lost five hit points forever. <laughs> you did not you do did. as well. Do you have that thing, the Bell's palsy, where like half your face is now permanently sagging, David, or something like that? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I was unsightly <laughs> beforehand, though. I, you know, it, it probably made me more attractive. <laughs> no, it really didn't. <laughs> um, so, so is Mark? Uh, you know, he's looking a bit exasperated. Um, Irina doesn't look, don't know why. <laughs> Irina doesn't seem to be particularly happy either. Um, and he says, but so the plan, I believe, is we, we must bury my father and then we must leave here as quickly as possible. I think the events of today have proven that Barovia, the village of Barovia, is, is not a safe place uh, anymore. Um, I, I think I will take Irina home and we shall come back at midnight to bury our father and then we shall leave. Can we, can we not just bury him very quickly now and then leave straight away? Waiting until midnight seems to be an invitation for more vampire business. And, Irina, and your father's not going to know the difference between now and midnight anyway. Yeah, Irina steps forward uh, and, and you know she's, she's not looking impressed. She pushes her brother out of the way. She says, no, father would never uh, approve of that. He was a staunch believer in the Morning Lord. We will bury him at midnight as, uh, as, as is custom. The last thing that we could do for him before, before leaving here. Mm, I'm not... <clears throat> Lord Talfrin strokes his moustache. Just, I'm not very convinced by that reasoning. We are in mortal danger. Doru has fled, no doubt, to report back to Strahd. And if Doru says that you may be leaving town, then what's to prevent Strahd from coming here at night or at any point to stop us? We must get you out of this town before it's too late. Would your father prefer an appropriate burial or your continued safety? Do you want to take a persuasion check? I don't know if I... Have to. I think I that know, was I just so logical. Yeah, I was persuaded. Yeah. 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 Yes. Like yeah. there's no there's no variable there. Like, it's just like uh-huh. you're fine. Persuasion plus five. Uh well, six plus five, eleven. Um oh. so you can see that um you know Ismark is sort of um subconsciously nodding his head as you speak to him. Uh but Irina puts her, her hands on her hips and she says, No, absolutely not. Uh, this is my decision, and, and it is final. I will be going nowhere without having seen my father uh, properly buried first. Alfred turns to the rest of the group and like, kind of like raises an eyebrow at them and be like, anybody else feeling that we're inviting trouble by staying here at night? We can always let them leave and then bury the guy immediately after they walk out the door. <laughs> Are you saying this in front of them? Hide I hope the so. Body. No, no, I'm quietly. Quiet, very quiet. <laughs> it makes a good point. Oh, oh, how about we do our little trick where I, you go invisible, I summon a bowl of light, and you convince her to leave now. Oh, I like that. That could be like our MO whenever dealing with anybody. Right, just take on the form of a god. We we could impersonate morning the morning lord. lord again. I... 
Of course. I've changed my rules. Yes. <laughs> I want bodies buried at tea time. Noon. <laughs> at noon. <laughs> yes. Call me the Elevensies Lord. <laughs> Before we do that, <laughs> God, right. Before we do that could, it, could I offer my services? I mean, I am a, I am a traveling priest, so um, I could also perform any mm. Mm. Uh, sanctimonious rites or something. Cool. I guess. I mean, Tra- I don't know the Morning Lord, but it's all the same, basically, yeah. intergalactically. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you um, Master Sonna? Is Master Sonna going to? Suggest that then? Yes. Mm. Okay. Well. Do I still have to persuade anyone? Yeah, go for it. So what are you saying? Uh, who, who, uh, who are you speaking to and who, um, what are you saying? Uh, Irina. So I, I'll speak directly to Irina mm-hmm. and tell her that, you know, um, actually, uh, may I offer you my services? Uh, I am uh, a pilgrim master, which is, uh, I'm guessing, a very much like your uh, priest of the morning lord, uh, I could do the burial r- rites for you, and we could do it now. What uh, say you? Uh, okay, roll a persuasion check. Okay. What's my persuasion? It's probably Four very, very seven. high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, five plus one is six. Mm, Ooh. Oh, and again, you can see... Mm. And even 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 as Mark looks dubious um, at, at that suggestion, um, uh, and she. Lord Catherine, I, I cough into my fist and say, "Well, there's one last point to be made. There is no priest to conduct the rites of midnight. As per our orders, the priest is at the bar drinking himself insensible, and will be of no use to anyone until at least late tomorrow afternoon." If he doesn't kill himself, I mean, that's... <laughs> On finding out that we let his son loose, right. Right. Um, that's also another thing. Him. He may be distracted about... Right. When he comes back, he may be distracted by Doru's mysterious escape. Um, I think waiting till midnight, therefore, does not make sense, given that there is no priest to conduct the ceremony. Um... Nope. Best that we do it now. Best that we get it done and then escort you to safety uh, before things can sour and you know, trapped in this so, town. So Ismark and uh, Irina both both look at each other, and, and then he turns back to you and he says, "Then I suspect that this is where we shall have to part ways, uh, because um, my sister and I will not dishonor our father like this. Even if Father Donovich is is not available tonight, uh, even if we have to ask somebody else to step in, and and he you know indicates towards Master Sonna, uh, we still." have to think about what he would want with with his religious beliefs and uh, you must understand it would bring great shame uh, to him to have known that he would not be buried uh, at the appropriate hour um, thank you for all you have done for us in, in the short time together but uh, my sister and I will make our own way um, from from now on um, well you. so long uh, it's good to meet you um, <laughs> we tried these people obviously want to commit suicide and I don't feel like it should be our responsibility to save everyone in this town I I, for one feel like we've earned a drink uh, maybe a, a round of song why don't we like just take a, a repast at the local public house and, and then talk about how to get out of this horrid town <laughs> two reasons one the priest is there he might I've already consumed all the liquor. And two, those gypsy women did not take kindly to our overtures last time. I think I was making headway. I, I, they, they, you know, they, I think with another yeah, shot, they uh, might n- no. If anything, I was weakening their resolve. I was <laughs> putting on my old school charm, and I did see some <laughs> smiling. But no, I, 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 well, I, I, I turned to them. Irena. And, and it's like, can we just have a moment, please? We need to confer. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, okay. So, what, 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 uh, what do you? What's the plan? We exactly. could not. We could not defeat him when we had him trapped. We had the advantage, and we were all at the ready. Like, we are stepping yeah. into a trap. We are going to all perish. Where would Doru go upon escaping? No doubt to his master, right? Yes. To get revenge on his dad? Oh, no. 
let's not think about that option. <laughs> oh, that's, 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 that's much more likely though when you think about it. That seems very likely. Well, the problem is... Should we run real quick actually... over just to check on him? Well, yes, yes, probably we should do that. The, the creepy thing is that if he goes to Strahd immediately and we have the possibility of facing Strahd this evening or, you know, during the day, then, then we are so going to die. Exactly. Well, don't forget, I, I have my, my secret weapon of vicious mockery, which makes people feel bad about themselves <laughs> as they were eating us. So I, I, don't, I don't see any problems. Yes, we do have that secret weapon. True. But Joru uh, recognized you, Reyna, didn't he? Um, so, uh, yeah, Ismark did say that as soon as Doru saw Irina, he, he left the village. He ran out of the village. So if Doru goes to Strad and says, Irina, who's been visited twice, is leaving town, Strad is going to react. I mean, the odds of his still catching up with us wherever we go is still high, but sitting here seems to be inviting trouble. But where else could we go? Back to the fog. I was sort of enjoying the mist. I mean, uh, it was sort of tingly and numbing, but I mean, that, <laughs> it's, it's like a strong bourbon, really. What if... No, that'd I'd be say we track down that lady who was who had the wagon load of the, the uh, magic Dream mushrooms cookies. or whatever they were, and we'll cookies. just take a load of those. Yes. <laughs> Go out and style. <laughs> Five biscuits, please. <laughs> Mm. Well, I, I for one can't abandon Irina and her brother, knowing what's coming for them. I feel like we have made a promise to them, which is why I think we should abscond with the father's body and force them to chase us out of town. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you think. Ah. Um. Well, so I think the thing we have to really figure out is if we are going to have to face these devils again. Is there any way we could be more productive in our, you know, attacks? Well, That's what we have until to... midnight to figure out, it seems to me. Right. Your magic seemed to work. I have magic very I little impotence. Magic. <laughs> I had what that effect about... on many men. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, what about what other substances might be used against them? What have we learned? Fire. Out of character, mm -hmm. sorry. Yes. Sorry. I, I can no longer separate in my head what I know out of character about vampires and what I know in character about vampires. <laughs> I think that, let us know what we what we know. Well, I, I think the only thing that you've you've really seen so far has been that your magic had a much better effect on Doru than the, the weapons that everyone else was using, the physical weapons. Um so we, other than that, I don't, don't think I don't think you've learned anything other than that. Irena yes. mentioned uh, sunlight, but yeah, we don't, guys we don't are get forever clouded gray. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. okay. So we we need magic stuff. Magic stuff. Do you think uh, Ismark or, might have or that? We, right, or we could ask around and try and learn of other things to use against them. Do a, a little like right. tra uh, research yes. montage. Ah, yeah. to the pub. I agree. To the, to the university library. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly yeah. the the priest would know. The priest might have more familiarity. I mean, his son has been locked in his he was locked in his cellar for quite some time. And I don't uh, really want to talk to him. But he's <laughs> loaded by awkward. now. He's loaded. And we were we, impersonating a god at the time. He's not going to recognize us. He'll I mean, be I'm telling not, Bart jokes at the bar. Uh, yes. I mean, you, you, only recently you you walked through the village, and you know the the village was active. There were you know there were people moving through it, so you don't have to go. Uh, you know, now that it's during the day, you know the you know it, it does I mean, behave like a normal village, so you wouldn't have to go to the pub. Um, Is there like a village map? No. Is there a, a village directory? <laughs> No, you, uh, you could ask around though. I mean, you could find out. Um, a town I think, crier. Uh, I oh. think. Um, I think you've spoken to Ismark before, and I think the the main places that that he was speaking about was obviously the tavern, the church, and then the uh, the the mercantile. 
Um, you know, the, the well, mercantile. Let me have magic stuff. I mean, you know, yeah. it's a store. It's yeah. a shop. We can well, ask to see what's in back. Some few did we ever maybe? ask? Yeah, did we ever ask Ismark what he knows that could hurt vampires? Did we? We did only we asked ask uh, Irena. Maybe, maybe Ismark can yeah. tell us something. And he might, you know, he he had a. He seemed to be a man of wealth and high station, and maybe he has valuables that could assist us. That he could give to us. <laughs> he's he's standing he's standing right here, talking to talking the sister. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, did we ever give him the the letter? I I, I can't remember. Uh, I, did we? I don't think you did. Because we, we should found give a letter from, in exchange. In exchange for. Wealth and knowledge. And magic. Or a wealth mm-hmm. of knowledge. Magic. Or knowledge of wealthy magic. Ah. Mm. Or magic um, knowledge. So what's the client oh. guy? <laughs> Let's give him the letter and see what his response is. And, and okay. um, so you hand it over and he says, what? So, sorry, what is this? Don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's a letter we found outside in, I think, the fog. Uh, if my memory serves well, it was it mm-hmm. was on a body that we found uh, hor- horribly mangled. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was that way when we got there. Yeah. Yes. And and if you yeah, recall, um, you know the uh, you know the letter was signed uh, Kolyan uh, Indirovich. That's um, Ismark and Irina's father. And you know Ismark reads the letter, and as he does so, he's stuff. he's shaking his head, and he says, "This uh, this is signed." The, the name on this letter, it says my father, but uh, this is not his script. This is, I, I know his handwriting. He he did not write this letter. And he, he looks angry and he, he crumples the page and he looks up to you. You can almost spot a tear in his eye. And he says, that, that fiend, Strad, this is another one of his ploys to, to lure more people to his land. This has nothing to do with us. So do you think Strad wrote the letter? I have no idea. I would not put it past him. Another one of his, his games, his ways of toying with people to bring them to this place. Possibly even to what bring did, them closer to me and to Irina. Um, so the, the letter, uh, the, the basic gist of the letter was, uh, this is a horrible place. Stay away from it. We have lots of treasures here, but don't come and get them. Oh, you buried the lead. <laughs> a lot of treasures. <laughs> um, well, I, I, I give a sharp tug on my coat and I, I look gravely at his mark and say, could you remind me one last time if you are yeah, aware of any particular weaknesses that these vampires have, anything that we could use to our advantage against them beyond magic. <sighs> to punctuate that, I, I throw a, a fireball out the window. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think this is the first time that, that Ismark has actually seen uh, anything like that from you. Um, uh, and, and you know, he, he takes a step back, and you both you see both his and Irina's eyes uh, you know, widen uh, in amazement. And he goes, "Yes, yes, I, I believe I believe that would be very effective. Uh, from from what I recall, mm-hmm. vampires uh, magic harms them like it does anything else. However, uh, you are right in saying that, that there are a lot of, of of weapons that just do not." Do not affect them. They seem to heal magically from, from wounds uh, almost as quickly as we can make them. Um, sunlight, of course, um, is, is their greatest weakness. But uh, for generations now, the Morning Lord has deserted us and, and the, the skies of Barovia have, have always uh, been grey. Um, running water is, is uh, the, the only other weakness uh, th- that I have heard of. Uh, it burns them um, like, an, like acid almost. Um, uh, Water guns, guys! Oh my god! <laughs> but uh, it is running water. It's rivers and streams only. Nothing. Uh, throwing a glass of water at their at their faces would would not, not really gonna, good. Not gonna do anything. Okay. No. What well, about well, a goat around. platter filled with water and you throw that at them? That'd be amusing. But <laughs> well, what if you had a big cauldron of water and you tipped it over and it caused like a torrent to flood across the street? That be enough to. Or is there like a, I, I have, a town fountain, maybe? I honestly Ooh. have no idea. I mean, you know, that is certainly... I I would not be wanting to test that if I was faced with Strad or one of his minions. Mm. Yes. He, um, they rest during the day. Most of the time during the day, they must rest in their coffins. That would be um, a good time to do a burial, you know? 
Last <laughs> um, Also, without an invitation, they cannot enter uh, people's homes. Okay, so what we need to do is we build a roving home that we carry around with us, just like a yurt, right? <laughs> and we just put it on, and we walk around, and when they come to us, say, so you can't come in. <laughs> okay, but then I go. have a question. If they can't enter your house unless they are invited, how did Strahd get to Irina? And Irina um, you know, lowers her eyes, and she you know, looks angry, and she says, That's, this is one of the reasons you must watch for, for vampires, because they can... They can control people's minds with just their gaze, and twice now Strad has used my weakness to, to gain entry. He forced me to give him permission to enter. But then he could do so again. Yes. Mm. But is that really permission if it's forced? It was enough to let him enter our home. Actually, that gives me an idea. I pull the others into a huddle, mm. and I say... What if we magically coerce them into burying the, their father now and leaving with us before night falls? I'm not above Strad, it. Strad style. I could use a spell <laughs> that would make them look upon our arguments much more favorably. We could then bury the father and get out of town. Uh, I'm, I'm, I like how he thinks. And, and, and maybe find some magic along the way. We need, we need some weapons because... We're not going to make it out of town. Well, Can we ask him if there's like a, a, a like a weaponer, or not a weaponer, an, ar- an armonist? What, what do you call them? People who make weapons? Uh, a swordista. A swordista. Right. <laughs> we need a swordista so that we can get some magical swords. Yes. Well, does, does anybody else have any moral issues with my coercing them into agreeing with us for their own safety? Yes. None whatsoever. You Nope. <laughs> That, that's one we, we will not, Can you tell us? We will not use the same mind raping tricks. Oh, oh come on now. This horrible call, person called Strong well, when is you using call all these it poor that, people. When, it does when seem you call worse. it that, it no. does seem. <laughs> okay. Well. okay this poor so, girl uh, has suffered enough. We should, not, you, we should really not do this. Okay. Well, then I think we should go find some magic swords from the Sortista. Should we ask his mark if he has any uh, heirlooms, uh, special weapons in his home? That's a great question. I, I think you I bow before the barbarian and gesture him to do put the question to <laughs> Ismark, son of Burgermeister. <laughs> You're such a great barbarian. Do you, do you have any heirlooms, weapons uh, that you kept in your family that, are, that might be at, at your estate that, that you believe might have some sort of special quality that might assist us in, in doing battle with Strahd? Um, uh, Ismark uh, looks at you and he, he draws his sword and he says... Um, this is this is my father's sword, and I believe it was passed on from his father to him as well. This is this is the the great heirloom of my house, but there there are no magical properties to it. If if that is what you're asking for, such a thing we do not have here in Barovia. It is the magic of of this realm is is for Strad alone, perhaps only the Vistanti, but they uh, you know they they would selfishly keep those things to themselves. The who? The the Fistanti, uh, the 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 traveling folk. Gypsy ladies. Yes. <gasps> we should, what if we ask? Where do they live? Ladies, if they have, they might have a magic sword. Yeah. I say we find out where where do the the Fistantis, uh where do they reside? Oh. We we saw them at the tavern, but yes, the, the tavern. There is the tavern. They have a they have a number of uh, encampments throughout Barovia, Barovia, a few hours away from the village to the west. Um, What's the it, closest one? Yes, uh, a few hours away to the west at the the the, the Zare <laughs> Pool. That is where uh, Madame Eva uh, keeps her her traveling folk. Well, what at, if at we the just Zare Pool? Uh, so it's T S E R. And it's Madam what is- Madam Eva. Eva. She is uh, she is the one of the leaders of the Vistanti uh, in this area. Hmm. Let's, why don't we talk? Let's talk to the ones in town. Maybe they they might have esoteric knowledge. They may be able to give us clues as to how or to cookies. Eat. Yes. Do they ever True. maintain rooms at at the uh, Blood of the Vine Tavern? 
<laughs> and he 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 raises an eyebrow. Again. He raises an eyebrow because he uh, he was there when you you had this conversation uh, the last time, and he says, "No, yes. I I believe you know they do not." <laughs> Maybe they've changed their minds. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was me impersonating his mark. <laughs> As we're having this discussion, I'm gonna you know see if I'm gonna be checking out uh, the heirloom sword and see if uh, there appear to be anything any anything unusual about it. Do you want to well, you make you him steal it? <laughs> do you want to make an investigation Sir. check? Okay. Uh, no, there are no uh, special properties. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait! I, forget, I'm a, I can, I can thief it. Um, four. He's, he's holding. He's, he's, holding <laughs> he's, he's, he's holding onto it. <laughs> well, it's, that's that's not stopping before. He's I'm a very, good. very good thief. Um, <laughs> so can I try to sneak around while everybody's having these great conversations, look very innocent, and just uh, whistle my way back around? Oh, I can go invisible! My God, <laughs> I go invisible. Do we do we really have to steal right from us. like the one person who's actually been nice to no, us? What's it? What's it? Place? Okay. <laughs> have we really had to do anything that we've done so far? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Well, we won't steal from the poor man his heirloom yes. sword. No. Let's just let him keep his heirloom sword. And um, all these morals are so frustrating. <laughs> you must think it very strange that we're saying this all in front of him. <laughs> I'm going to assume especially this is- when I announce I go invisible. I go invisible yeah. and I just stand there. <laughs> so what? What I is that? Why Doru beat us so easily? What is the plan, guys? We're going to the blood of the vine for multiple reasons. Okay. Yes. Um, what do you guys think? One yeah. to get a yes. beverage. Yes. Two to ask the gypsy ladies for secret intel on vampire weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Three to check in on the priest and see if we can convince him to do the internment a little bit early. But maybe his argument would have more sway with Irina. Okay. Oh, we could trick him and be the morning lord again and tell him that he has to bury the body around noon. I'm ready. Do we want to do that in front of the gypsy ladies? It might have might impress them into giving us rooms. <laughs> well, since I am not a magic user, I will follow your lead. What do you, what do you guys think? Should we should we try that, or some some parts of all that? Now, how? Yeah, I I agree. I I think maybe one of us could be uh, casing the tavern while you're engaging in those conversations. I and, who's this? Were there multiple stories? Maybe we could break into the second floor and where they keep all their magic maybe they swords. keep magic swords. <laughs> who's our who's our best caser? Sto- could we could we like um, separate and like two of us go to the to the tavern and two of us go to the mercantile shop? Scooby the party that never uh, goes well. Uh, no, oh, but like, in, in fairness, they're they just across the road from each other. So, mm. so if one of us screams very loud, then <laughs> was it one scream? <laughs> Don't come and get me two. Uh, right. I'm having a great oh, yeah. time. <laughs> 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 I, I, I want to go with like whoever has like no ethics. Like let's let's go pillage somebody. Like I vent, I have a set up these tools. I'm ready to go. Okay, you I'm going to steal stress? something. I haven't stolen any, anything yet. I don't think I've stolen anything yet. <laughs> right. So we're splitting the party. Is that right? Are two going to the blood of the vine? Are two going to the the mercantile across the road? Sure. I want to go to the mercantile. <laughs> who, who else? For no reason. I'll, I'll go to the blood of the vine. I'll oh. go to the mercantile. No! I have, no! I have the, <laughs> the blood of the vine it is for me. <laughs> uh, okay, so guys, as you make your way... How about, how, about, how about we split the party three ways and David case the joint while I have the ladies distracted? Ooh. Outstanding. Okay. So uh, Ismark and Irina are happy to stay... Um, at the church with their, their, their father's casket. Um, as you make your way back into Barovia, you know, it is uh, it, it's about mid- midday by now, guys. It, it's busier. Same as last time. You know, there are a few people pass, uh, moving along on the street. Most of them 
you know, faces seem to be almost lifeless. They're, they don't really look at you as they walk past. They just seem to be going about their business. Every now and again, you know, you do uh, see a smile, you know, a wee shock of colours. Maybe someone's got a nice snazzy outfit as they're, as they're moving along, but it's, it's very drab. And the sky uh, remains grey. Um, you know, there's no... Um, you know, there is no sunlight here. And, and, and all the while you're aware of the, the presence of the, of Castle Ravenloft, uh, high on the cliff above the, the village. And it does seem to sort of dominate you, even when you're not, when you, when you're not directly looking at it. You, you can constantly feel this, this presence of the castle behind you. Um, we'll go to the mercantile first. So Master Sunna and, um, uh, Master Mordomé. Oh, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, you forget my name. <laughs> <laughs> How could I? <laughs> so, uh, so guys, there's a a door. Uh, sorry, a sign over the door here, and it says Buildrath's Mercantile. Um, when you walk in, there's. Uh, I mean, it's set up like a very simple uh, frontier town kind of. Um, um, establishment uh, there's there, there is a counter behind the counter is where the um uh, the, the salesperson is uh, with all the goods on, arrayed on shelves uh, the only difference here guys is that there is um, a, a massive set of bars um but uh, basically separating you from the um the goods behind the counter uh, this is it's all barred <laughs> off they knew so. i was coming <laughs> Ricky. <laughs> so you're 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 having to speak to you know there's there's a, a gentleman um uh, behind the counter um uh, he's a older man uh, about forties at, at the youngest uh with a nice sort of big uh hefty beard and uh, his hair is um you know well groomed short um and he sort of looks at you when when you come in there's no sort of nod or no smile or anything but you know he can clearly he can see you and he and he's he sort of grunts. Well, met. <clears throat> Hello. <Wow. laughs> we're not from around here, but we were uh, we were just shopping for you know just the normal sort of everyday items. I don't know what. Uh, what sort of things do you have here? Uh, and he and he and he grunts again and, and and indicates to the shelves and he sees and he says, oh, a "Whole load of stuff. What are you after?" Ooh, well, I think we're really in the market for something uh, sort of... Kills vampires? Vampire killy. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, something uh, I... So his, eye, his eyes widen as you say that, and, he, and he, he sort of darts, you know, his eyes dart around the room, even though there's, there's really nothing of interest there behind you, um, just almost as if he's trying to look for, you know, the, the trap or, you know, what, like, what's going on? He says, I've got, certainly got weapons. Uh, nothing. Nothing specifically for vampires. Yeah. Oh, but so, but you know what would potentially kill a vampire? Well, I think cutting off its head would be a pretty good way of going about it. Oh, hmm. well, that's useful. Okay. Good knowledge. Um, Not that easy to do it, though. No, no, no. We, 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 we've learned. <laughs> uh, do you have any magical stuff? Things, and, uh, items. He, uh, uh, you know, for for the first time, you actually see an emotional reaction from him. He kind of half smiles, and then and he, and he grunts, uh, you know, in, in sequence, and you and you realize that's his 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 laugh. <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that here. I haven't seen anything like that for for a long time. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Okay. Um, well, I, I I don't want to be like rude, but uh, do you have anything nicer in the back? Uh, everything here, everything here is everything I've got. What, okay. what do you need? A different store. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I can't recall. I know we had talked about this uh, off camera. If, if, had, there, had, there, had there ever been a shopping list made? Or I um, I, we never decided how much money we had. Well, I think um, we had figured out. Isn't that right? That uh, didn't you have a, a list of items um, that you had? Yeah, we have like. Ma- uh, Gems and, yeah. and stuff. Uh, yeah, and I think we had agreed on, you know, a price for them. So certainly, if you, you know, if you pass them over to Bill Drath, you know, he he would right. happily pay that um, that price for them. Um, I had I had a, a wish list. Okay. Um. Oh, yeah. So I thought like a whip would be cool. 
I, I don't know when I'll use it, but like it's it's only two gold pieces, and I think I could, you know, maybe swing from a tree or something with it, a whip. And so he so he, he looks at you and he goes, ah, "I've got a whip here." Yeah, uh, not nice. Tw- twenty gold pieces. A what? <laughs> you must be twenty. Joking, sir. Twenty. <laughs> it's just a piece of string. And he and he he's again he's not reacting at all as you as you laugh. And he and he holds up again and he says. Uh, 20, 20 gold pieces. Okay, so I want to cast uh, a, a minor illusion here. <sighs> right? <laughs> I, I would like to what appear to as something terrifying to this man. What do we think he'd be frightened of? Bargain <laughs> sales. Oh, how, do you, how many spells do you have, Lane? Oh, this is this is a catnip. Oh, right, a catnip. <laughs> I can cast as many catnips as I like. Okay. The best part about it. Yep. Um, so I I will uh, make a minor illusion where I uh, appear to uh, grow fangs and have red glowing eyes. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> okay. Uh, Hopefully he runs away. Okay. What is your <laughs> leaves the shop? Why what... did I go with him? Why do I owe? <laughs> <laughs> what is your um, spell? Uh, DC, it's on your on your spell page. It should be at the top of it. Oh yeah, uh, my uh, a spell attack bonus is five plus five. No, so beside the attack bonus, you should have like a spell thirteen. Save. Thirteen. 13. So uh, his eyes widen again. You get a nice sort of emotional reaction. Uh, his eyes do widen uh, when when he sees this, uh, and then he sort of grunts again and he says, "Huh, this is a nice trick. It's been a while since I've seen something like that." I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> That was my best stick. Um, oh, it, was, it was really good. So it's pretty impressive. Okay, so the whip is out. Does anybody else have something they would like from the store? Yes, do you have um, strong alcohol and um, maybe a sheet that we could tear into um, pieces? And, I don't know, do they have like lighters or matchsticks or tinderbox or something? Um, Probably we've got something. This is going to be quite a party. Yeah, we got. I mean, I've got. I've got. (laughs) We're going to light all these vampires up, my friend. We've got this blanket. I could give Hmm. you for fifty, fifty silver pieces. Fifty silver pieces. It is now. uh, It's very difficult to get a a, a judge on, uh, you know, the the market value. But from what you can gather, you know, these are fairly extortionate uh, prices. Let's just go. Go steal it from the hotel. I mean, there's no reason to pay 50 gold pieces for a sheet. <laughs> Let's find a bum who's asleep and take his coat. There's no reason to pay 50 silver for this. I think Jean has met his nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you don't have to. You don't have to pay me for it, but I don't know where else you're going to buy it. There's only <sighs> this one shop in town. Well, the only shop in Barovia, and unless you're going to deal with the Vestante, you're going to have to go all the way to Valaki before you find anyone else. And I'll be honest, from what I can gather, they're charging the same that I am. So, 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 uh, Master Sona, how, how how confident are you in this sort of, you know, premise of making explosive incendiary bombs with alcohol sheets and glass? Well, it's not my forty, but um, I am very willing to try <laughs> oh if you're looking to uh make some kind of explosive you'd probably be better off with some oil instead of uh oh, know, it burns, uh, burns a lot better how much for the oil though it doesn't taste as nice though uh yeah. 10 uh 10 silver pieces for this flask oh, that's not bad hmm. is it a glass flask uh no it's clay well, that's, it's just it's, we can just use that yes. with a sheet. How many yeah. of those should we get? Well, we could have, I don't know, how many do we need? I can carry four. <laughs> okay. Uh, can we get, um, let's say, six? Do you have six? Yep. Hmm. And the sheet. Yep, yeah, that's and, fine. And the blanket? Okay. Yeah. Tell you what, because I like you, and you did that trick. A uh, gold piece will do for all of it. Six flasks and the blanket. My math is poor. Is that actually a, a bargain, or is he switching? Yeah, he's, no, he's giving you a little bit off. A few silver pieces. Oh, okay. Oh, I have to ask you. It doesn't seem <laughs> to give discounts. I think you like ten silver pieces. 
Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes, it's. Um, we, I, I do think we can we can afford one gold piece. Okay. Cool. Anything else, guys? Um, do you want like? Uh, um, I I gave away my dagger. I gave my dagger away, but yeah. they don't work. So what's the matter? Like you know, it's. Mara got a dagger here. You? If you want mother dagger. <laughs> No, oh, we don't. God. No. no. We don't want <laughs> dagger. Just stinking dagger. What's up? Um, do you have. Uh, so, hmm, hang on. What else do we Do we like ropes or grappling hooks? Do you have a, do you have a map, or? maybe, of, of, of Barovia and uh, um, the mm, Arch no. region? No. 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 Uh, no one has a map here. This is very annoying. To well, me. Do you, sure, do you probably, have a, do you, could probably draw you something if you wanted. Oh. 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 Since you bought oh. something from me, you didn't moan too much. Well, would you? For, oh, yeah, for... okay, since you asked. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what, what is it you want a map of? So, I'd like to know, so this is Barovia, and we know yep. uh, above Barovia is Ravenloft, which is Castle of Strahd. Mm-hmm. And he, he does kind of, of uh, look a, fear, a brief look of fear when you mention Strahd's name. Well, am I supposed to say you know who? <laughs> uh, and anyway, we've heard about this place to the west, which is called yep. Stra- Strapool or something. Valaki. And, and Valaki. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I need a map. I'm actually yeah, yep. a photographer by yeah. trade, and uh, I am useless without a tool that I can and, and actually he, and, use. He, and he takes a piece of parchment, and he's got his tongue sort of sticking out as he doodles away. Uh, and, he, and, and he's halfway through, and he looks up at you, and he goes, "You know, I, you're really lucky you asked me. I'm pretty good at this kind of thing." Yeah. So um, this is a, this is a map of Barovia right here, and, and it's uh, it's it's terrible. Um, oh. There's there's no actual language used on it, but he but he but he but he, he points out this is uh, this is us right here. That's the village. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. that nice little castle. That's the castle. Oh. Okay. So what you want to do? Is you want to have a look uh, over here, uh, and this is, uh, this is a nice road that takes you all the way to the village of Valaki. That's uh, to the west. Uh, it's kind of like a valley. Like we've got mountains to the south and mountains to the north, and most of Barovia is just like a, a forest. So if you travel west, you get to the village of Valaki. It's right beside the lake, uh, and then if you keep traveling west, there's another village, uh, Kresik. Uh, all the way off to the west. That's uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I know about Barovia. And where's the? Do you know where the camp of the Vistanti is? Oh, the Vistanti. Oh, there's a couple of them. We've got one right here, right up Barovia. There's okay. just a short while down the road. If you keep heading west, you can't miss it. I think they've got one in Falaki as well, from what I gather. Uh, I've never been there myself. Too dangerous to travel. So we've just got a hand-drawn map from a man who's never been there. That's, that's got to be reliable. But, I mean, he is the only sort of merchant, so he probably has, like, trade routes. And oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. People yes. who, who have been there. Well, <laughs> presumably. I don't, okay, I don't, so mm-hmm. this is atrocious, but I, I will take it. Uh, and yep. uh, thank you, dear sir. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I, I don't know how to spell that. Um, it's good, though, right? Yeah, it's totally good. Beautiful. Right. Good, good day to you. Good day. Crit Faced is a weekly Dungeons & Dragons podcast. To make sure you never miss an episode, and to get an exclusive prequel episode of the podcast, where you can find out what our characters were up to before this adventure began, head over to CritFacedPodcasts.com and join our Crit Faced fan group.